So I watched Moana yesterday, and my favorite part was like at the end when... <laughs> I, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm not gonna spoil anything. I just did that in case my friend DJ Tiki was watching. He probably like threw up in his mouth a bit in anxiety. <laughs> I am a cruel human being. <clears throat> so anyways, this is the episode commentary for Jack vs. Jasper. And next episode we're doing Aang vs. Jack from Jack and Dexter. So we're having two Jacks in a row, but they're spelled differently, so it's okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyways, as for Jack versus Jasper, um, so far in universes I've had pretty well-known characters, Sora and Dante, uh, Piccolo and Boros, Eggman and Cortex, Disney characters, Bowser and DDD. I was like, you know what, I need some lesser characters, so I was like, let's take some random background villain from Steven Universe and put him against some random Tekken character that barely anyone acknowledges when referring to the story. Because Jack units are like the grunts of the Tekken series. <laughs> Like, they're just the basic enemies in uh, Tekken Force and Devil Within, or in the Scenario Campaign. They're just easily destroyable. And they're, like, continent level at best, too, so... <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. The grunts in Tekken are continent level. Or large country level, or whatever you want to call it. Because I'm sort of debating whether that blast was country level or island level. I'm leaning a bit towards island level, though, but... Then Jack 6 is stated to be 10 times stronger, so that would make it country level, and it's all confusing. Jack's power is very confusing, but basically it's... it's... very high level, pretty much. Mm. Hmm. And also, Jack and Jasper both have a lot in common anyways. They're both military-like, big, bulky, brawling creations. Because Je uh, Jasper is a Rose Court soldier, so she's like a grunt of Steven Universe, even though we don't get that many grunts in the show. They're just all characters. <clears throat> and they both start with the letter J, so that's good. That's good reason for them to fight, isn't it? The number one reason to fight. Similar stats? No. Um, lots of sim similarities in their personality or weaponry? <laughs> no. It's if they start with the same letter. Everyone knows that. Like, Poe versus... Poe from Kung Fu Panda versus, um... Poe... I couldn't think of anyone overpowered that starts with the P. Um, I'm sure I'll think of one later. Oh, Popeye. Poe the Kung Fu Panda versus Popeye. They have nothing in common. Literally nothing. But they both start with the letter P, so they should fight, right? <laughs> My throat hurts. Anyways, I'm super excited for Tekken 7 and what they're gonna do with Jack Thayer. Like, he looks so cool and glowy. Like, he could glow in the dark or something. Yeah, I'm rambling. I have no clue what to say. I was not prepared for this episode commentary at all. Usually before I do episode commentaries, I think and I'm like, Hmm, gee, I wonder what I should say today in the episode. But I didn't even think of what I was going to say today this time. So now I have no idea what to say. So I guess I'll just talk about my feelings on each series. Uh, yeah, you already know I like Tekken a lot. It's super cool. And still a Tekken character lost. <laughs> So take that, people who call me biased. Yeah. Oh, that's another thing. I spent three weeks working on every single Fictional Fights episode. Three weeks for every episode, and then for this, I only spend a couple days. And yet, people th think this one's more accurate, and they like it a lot more. I don't know how that happens. I don't... I don't know what's going on. Like, people are like, oh my gosh, Universes is so good. And I'm like, I, I only spend a couple days on each episode. On Fictional Fights, I spend three weeks. So, it's, it's pretty weird how this is the better show. And this is the more, um, higher quality show. Despite it being made much quicker and easier than Fictional Fights. So that's very unusual to me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you already know how I feel about Tekken. Um, how I feel about Steven Universe. 
I enjoy the show sometimes. I, I like the plot related elements, but I cannot stand the character related elements. <clears throat> like Steven Universe, or the main character Steven, he is not emotionally mature. Like, they feel like making a character sensitive does not mean that, uh, they feel like making a character sensitive means that they're emotionally mature. But no, Steven is emotionally unstable. He's like crying one second, he's happy the next second, he's angry the next second, he's all forgiving and the, he has like major mood swings and it's really creepy and actually kind of uncomfortable. It's like watching a, a very disabled kid try to save the world. <laughs> and I should know, I'm a disabled guy. Like, imagine me trying to shoot an enemy out of the sky like with like a super cool laser pistol. But because I have visual disabilities, I can't hit anything. <laughs> so yeah, it's like Steven has some kind of emotional disorder. And he's struggling through it as he tries to save the world, and it's very uncomfortable to watch. Not only that, but all the forced SJW messages. Like shoving their agendas down our throat. Like, look! Look, the gems, they're, they're hugging, and they're girls, but not really. We're getting away with it by saying that they're not girls, but let's face it, they're girls. We use female pronouns, and they look like girls. They're, but they're not girls, though, guys. They're, they're, they're not girls. They're not girls, totally. Never, ever girls. <laughs> yes, Pearl, who wears a skirt, and people call she, and has a female voice actor, is not a girl. Nope. Not one bit. Also, all the crystal gems are terrible people. <laughs> Just saying it right there. Amethyst has done some horrible things like teasing Greg about Rose. Like when she shapeshifted into Rose. Pearl abused fusion with Garnet. Basically rape. And Garnet... <clears throat> uh, there was something Garnet did. I just don't like Garnet. Her voice actress. Her voice actress is terrible. Estelle cannot emote to save her life. Like any scene, like Garnet typically doesn't show much emotion, but any scene where Garnet actually does show fear, or anger, or anything where she has to yell, Estelle cannot do it. She sounds terrible. I like the plot and the action scenes of the show. But the characters get on my nerves a lot. I really like the villains, though. I love Lapis. I love Peridot. I love Jasper. They are all great, fantastic characters. But I cannot stand the main Crystal Gems. Rebecca Sugar cannot write good characters for them. Making them overly emotional does not equal developed. <clears throat> like Peridot's redemption. Lapis is getting a better outlook on how life is on Earth. That is development. That is development. And then ha later on they may have Jasper swallow her pride and join the Crystal Gems. That would be development. But Pearl going, Oh, I'm gonna do something horrible! And then cry because I feel bad about it! That's not development. Or Steven going, Guys! Guys, what's going on? I don't understand! And then him understanding it by crying and thinking about it, that's not development either. Rebecca Sugar cannot write protagonists. She can only write villains. Ugh. But anyways, <clears throat> that's all I have to say about this episode and my thoughts on the series that the characters were pulled from. But see you next time when Aang takes on Jack.